a couple of kits, uh, I believe there's going to be two uh, in this round, of what I'm building next. Uh, so we're going to be looking at, um, <laughs> excuse me, as I'm sure you've seen by the title of the video, it's going to be the Modelcraft 148 scale uh, F82 twin Mustang. Uh, these particular kits, I actually have, I have three of them. I have one that's in a box and I have two that are bagged. Um, and I'm going to do a bit of a comparison in this video just to compare what I have in the box versus what I got in these bags. These bags I purchased on eBay, both kits for like $25 Canadian, uh, shipped out from uh, the West Coast. I believe I bought them from somebody who was involved in model craft and I'll show you why as I go through this kit. Uh, they both came bagged like this, no boxes, one set of instructions that are just photocopied uh, on an eight and a half 11 by 11 piece of paper, which makes me think they're just kind of end of the line off the molds and they were not good enough for boxed kits. And like I said, I have a boxed kit that I will compare against just for uh, reference because there are some serious issues with this kit and I don't know if it's across the board or just this particular one because it's later in the run. Now Modelcraft was a Canadian company. It started in the mid 90s, 94, 95. For the most part, they re-boxed other kits. Uh, Frog, Esky, uh, Matchbox, Ravel, um, Occidental, a couple of different kits, mostly stuff that had Canadian con connections and they were reboxed with new decals for Canadian schemes. Now this F82 is the first and only kit that they fully tooled themselves. And I have a distinct feeling this might have been why the, 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 the company never disappeared. They still exist. You can still buy stuff off their website. You can still buy these kits off the Modelcraft website. And re, uh, not too long ago, they partnered with Canuck Decals and they released the Academy 172nd scale Hornet under the Modelcraft name with Canuck uh, Battle of Britain anniversary decals. So the, the, the company still exists, but this is the only kit they ever tooled themselves. And I think it didn't go very well and they never went back to it. Um, so the kit is a mix mash of kind of, the best way I would describe this is it is a short run kit. I don't know if it was intended as a short run kit, but it feels very much like a short run kit. Um, a lot, decent detail. Engraved panel lines. Um, you know, the there's some flash on it, but like I said, I believe these were late, um, late production uh, pieces off the molds and that there were some issues with the molds. Um, you know, instrument panels are not bad. I'll zoom in here a little bit. Uh, so you can get a good look at the instrument panels. Um, you know, they look, they don't look horrible. They look half decent for a mid nineties. You know, that's what you would see on a, on a monogram kit. And that's what we're seeing here. Sorry, I'm just gonna make sure this mic isn't <clears throat> rubbing. But you know, the instrument panels are not horrible for its age and timeline. You can see there's some nice fine engraved panel lines enough that you would they're, I mean, they're pretty shallow. My nail just catches them. They might need to be deepened slightly if you want to do a black wash. Uh, but I mean, they, they st they're they there. Uh, the big issue that this this particular kit and both my bagged kits that I bought from, from off eBay suffer, if I pull up this piece here, see if I, if you find the right angle in the light, you can see right here, there's all of this surface. There you go. There's all of this kind of surface imperfection. There's a really bad one up here. Yeah, you can see right there. There's this big section of imperfection on it. You can really see it there. It almost looks like the, you know, the, the chrome on the inside of the molds was peeling off and they are running into these issues of the molds failing and all of the imperfections on the molds coming through on the plastic. I mean, a perfect example is if you look at this sprue again, on the back side, on the sprue itself, look at the chunk missing out of that. You know, that tells me that bits of plastic either didn't mold properly or stuck, 
stuck to the inside of the, of, of the, the mold. They die. Like, again, look at here. There's this big chunk missing. You know, it almost looks like the hot plastic, when they popped it, stuck to the inside of, of the, um, the mold. I mean, look at the insides of the wings. If I look at, the, look at that. Now, luckily, that's on the inside. But that is some serious repair work to the mold where, it, you know, they weld into the mold and then grind it down to make sure. Look at this. Let's see if I can get the shine there. There you go. You can tell that there had been some repairs happening to the molds. So I think the molds were starting to reach the end of their life. Um, see, this one here isn't as bad. Uh, this is all the rockets and drop tanks and underwing pylons. The section that has the cockpit uh, pieces, the nose, again, not in bad shape. I mean, you look through the detail here, tires are in decent shape. A tail wheel doesn't look too bad. Um, seat has a bit of flash on it, but nothing horrible. Cockpit floor, there's some, some ejector pin markings and stuff that need a bit of cleanup on that. Um, it's not perfect. You can tell it was a short run kit. Um, but my, I don't know anything of the insides of this company. I'm going to take a wild guess that they designed this kit. They had, he, you know, he went through all this effort to have this designed, put all, you know, all the work into this thing, sent it off. It was done in the Czech Republic. And my guess is whoever made the dies cheaped out on the dies. And the dies, the molds, especially on this fuselage section, didn't hold up. Now, he had multiple versions of this. He had the B, the E, and the G. Um, and out of all of that, these sections here were common. The fuselage, the center section, the wings were common across all of the airframes. These are common to the E. Um, the B would have had the drop tanks. The G would have had the radars and the night fighters and the, right, uh, and the, the, the radar pod and, and all that stuff. So this is only for one aircraft type. Um, this changed per kit. These would also change per kit. This would be common probably to all the aircraft but this side would change based off of whether it needed to have the night fighter exhausts or the different noses between the B and the E and the G. So, and you can see there's a, a sprue gate here where that would flop and you would have a different, different section out here with a different mold. Um, depending on which way it, it, it fed, it fed into a different, a different side of of the uh, the mold so you can see the the parts that got used heavily have damaged the parts that didn't get used very heavily are in decent shape so i think you know he went out he had the molds made in the czech republic he had the kit started to be popped out and the molds failed a lot sooner than expected and that's the kind of thing that can sink a ship if you're going to spend a couple of hundred grand on having a mold made if that mold starts to fail earlier than expected and you lose your quality of your kit long before your your costs are supposed to amortize out, you know what I mean? You have no, you're, you're losing money. And I think that's probably what happened. He started losing money on every kit when he realized he'd have to get new molds made and the project just kind of went to the wayside and whatever the last batch that he got that are in damaged is ones he's just currently selling on the sites. That's my guess. I don't have any insight. I'm just basing that off of off of what I see and what I know of the company. Now, that being said, if you do want an F-82, uh, Modelsvit has recently released a new version uh, of their own version of this kit. Um, it's an, you know, obviously it's newer. It's got, it's got um, more detail, better technology, all that other fun stuff. A lot of the like, CAD work, whereas this would have been modeled by hand. Nowadays it's CAD, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're gonna pay for it. Obviously the price is a lot higher. Like I said, I got two of these for $25. So the price is right on these if you find them. Um, they're going to take a bit of work, so just be prepared. If you've noticed, there's a bit of aftermarket I had. Uh, this particular one we built as a G, so I bought some aftermarket um, radars and, and, and whatnot and canopies and some cockpit decals so I can make the canopy open. you got to put the work in, but it's cheap. 
So, you know, and when I bought this at the time, the models of it wasn't even out yet. So go figure. Um, just gonna take a quick look at the insides, the cockpit. Uh, it does have some molded on detail inside the cockpit. Not horrible, again, about what you would expect from a mid nineties monogram kit. Um, and there's the other side. Again, there's some missing detail here. I don't know if that's the mold failing. It definitely looks like there's been some work done inside the molds. Um, there's a lot of goopiness in there. It looks like they had to go through and kind of weld in some pieces or fill in something in the mold. Same in the nose up here. There's a lot of nastiness going on where it looks like the molds were repaired. Um, using my aftermarket decals, I'm gonna hide most of that and just some, some detailed painting and some dry brushing and whatnot isn't gonna look too, too bad. But you do get some decent detail on the inside of the fuselage for those who are interested. Uh, wheel wells, same thing, decent detail in the wheel wells. Uh, again, for this age of kit, the wheel doors, again, some decent, uh, some decent detail in there, a little bit of dry brushing and some black wash would make that pop quite nicely. Surface will need a bit of prep. You get what you pay for. Uh, looking at the instructions, I'm gonna make sure I keep you guys centered while I go through here. Um, step one, is the gluing in of the uh, cockpit pieces. Most of these extra little pieces are just blobs, box shaped blobs. There's no real detail to it. And you can see the detail on the cockpit's a lot less than what is actually being shown on the kit. As I said, I believe this is a later, a later mold. And, and again, I am gonna go get the box kit and I can compare to this here at the very end just to see if it's an overall quality issue or if I'm just getting a late damaged mold, we'll see. I'm going with that theory until then. So step one is the blobby bits. Step two, um, you're installing some more of the seats, uh, the instrument panel, the rudder pedals, all that kind of stuff. It also shows you to do uh, times two as they are going to be mirror images of each other because um, there's two, two fuselages and they're identical. So uh, two of that, two of that. Step three uh, is only for the port side. So only the one fuselage gets done like that. Uh, step four, you're assembling the nose sections. You'll also see um, there's different uh, props per side. Uh, if memory serves, they had two different spinning engines, one left hand, one right hand to counter torque. So the props will be in different directions. I believe uh, I'll know more when I actually get into the parts. It says what, uh, D5 times four and D6 times four. It's kind of hard to tell, but it does look like the props are opposite of each other. I'll know more when I actually get into building and I memory is a little fuzzy on that, but um, I believe they're counter rotating props. Otherwise, um, it, it, you, you assemble the nose section and props and spinners. Uh, section uh, five is the uh, radiator uh, uh, exhaust door. You can pose it up or down depending on whether your aircraft is in flight or out flight or the condition of the aircraft you choose how you want it, which is a nice touch. Uh, step six is a uh, tailwheel. You're gluing in uh, tailwheel doors. Uh, step seven is the tailwheel itself. There's some details that go on. Again, that's a nice feature that you have to build up the tailwheel uh, versus just a single piece. It shows us some effort into detailing there. Step eight, you're actually gluing it together. Step nine, you glue the fuselage together and you add the tops of the tails. Again, those differ very between versions. I'll have to do my research and see what the shape is for the uh, G that I'm building. I might have to modify those. I have to put you in frame. Um, so you can see the tops of the tails are separate bits. So you just have to confirm for your version. If, if, you're, if you're, I'm using an E, I wanna make one into a G, so I gotta make sure it matches. Uh, one will be a G, one will be an E. Research, research, research. Step 10, you're gluing the nose section onto the fuselage. Um, again, just as a forewarning, I'll know more when I get into building this. I don't usually like assembling the two fuselage halves and then putting them together. I prefer gluing the nose half onto the fuselage half on a flat surface. Make sure that's nice and true. Same on the other side, and then you glue the fuselage together. If you glue this, if you get that off a little bit and you get the fuselage off a little bit, you'll end up with a, I'm, I'm very zoomed in here, so, but you, you, if they're not perfectly square, you can end up with a plane with a nose that's, that's off on an angle. So I prefer gluing the two halves together, the forward half and the back half together get one monolithic fuselage side, do the other side, then glue the two together. That way, if you do end up with a slight off 
seam. It's only going to be on one. Anyways, you, you, you know, I'll explain more in my build video as I'm going, but I find if you build two halves and try to fit them together, you usually end up with some sort of a misalignment. Uh, that's just personal building, but whatever works for you. Step 11 um, is the wing center section. Um, you build up the landing gear, the gear doors, and you put on the um, uh, radiator intake. Um, again, I, I wouldn't necessarily be gluing the gear on at this point. That's something that can be done later when the whole aircraft is assembled, but whatever build sequence works best for you is best. Uh, here it also shows you where to drill the holes if you choose to do the center um, rockets. I'll go into that in a little, in a little bit. Um, section 12 and 13 are your outer wing panels. And again, it shows you to drill um, holes depending on what you put on the wings. Um, step 14 is gluing the fuselage, two fuselage sections onto the center wing section and the tail section, stand by one, please. Hello? Hey. Hey. Hey, we're just on the way back. Okay. Um, she'll be home around five. Okay. I'll start making food when you get home. The, sure, yeah, I'm just gonna stop at the bank to deposit that uh, check from the flying club because I've been hanging on to that for a couple of days. Okay. So, um, and then, yeah, I'll be home. Do okay. you need anything from Metro? I don't think so. Okay. Okay. We'll be home soon. Yep. I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. Okay. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Okay. Step 14. You're gluing the two fuselage sections onto the center wing section along with the horizontal stab, which gets sandwiched in between. So that's step 14. Step 15. Um, you're gluing the outer wing assemblies onto the fuselage and uh, gluing the cockpits on. Again, not necessarily the time to be doing the cockpits, depending on your painting strategy, uh, but that is there. Section 16 is assembling the rockets if you choose to use them, and 17 is the drop tanks if you choose to use them. And then the last step, which is unnumbered, is just showing you where the drop tanks or the rockets go on. Now, as the E model, this has the option to carry uh, two drop tanks, one under each wing, in which case you drill out the inner sets of holes, or you're able to carry five sets of five rockets, which is 25 rockets in total. Now, to be perfectly honest, that's probably what I'm doing when I build this kit, because that is an unbelievably awesome <clears throat> loadout. Sorry, not this one. I mean, this particular kit is the one I'm doing out as a night fighter. My other one will be the E. I'll be doing it that way, because that is so cool to have 25 rockets hanging out under the wings of this thing. Anyways, uh, if you do that, you have to cut out uh, both sets of holes on the wing as well as the set in the center section. So that is the full set of instructions. There's no decal placement guides as these ones did not come with decals. It's the other thing I forgot to mention as because I bought these, uh, what's my guess is, like I said, they're leftover plastic, uh, photocopied instructions, no decals, hence why I bought the Caracal decals to do my finished versions. Um, so just to kind of go back to the instructions now that you've seen that, sorry, the plastic, you can see the nose sections of the propellers, prop spinners, everything looks decent. Um, you know, there's, 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 you can see everything is here. Rudder pedals, the bits and pieces for the tail, uh, tail wheel, um, the, the control stick. These are the blobby bits for the cockpit. Again, there's not much there. Uh, this is the cockpit floor. That's the armor plate. That's the turtle deck. You've got your radiator input. Um, I don't know what that is. I think that's inside. Yeah, inside the radiator housing. So that's the piece that goes up inside the fuselage for the radiator door. You know, tail wheel doors is the tops of your horizontal stabs. Again, these are both duplicates of themselves. Uh, the fuselage sections with the center wing section. And it does have some nice marked holes for the drilling out of the pieces you have to. Um, they're nice and easily marked, so it's easy to find and do the drilling. Time will tell how well all of this goes together. Um, the center section, um, you can kind of see how the center wing section fits in the center. And the fuselages sit on the outer sections and then these wings clip into the, the, the forms on the side. I'll be very interested to see how the um, seams end up looking on the um, fuselage. 
on the wings. Um, I mean, it's not going to be much of a problem for me to seal them. It's just I'm curious to see how the seams will look. And being a, an engraved panel line aircraft, it'll be a lot easier for me to go back after the fact and rescribe anything I have to rescribe. Now, as I said, I have these two bag kits. I'm going to mention it again for like the umpteenth time. Pretty sure they're late run end of the production line didn't pass QA to be a full kit plastic. At this point, I'm going to go get the box and we'll compare that to this and see if there's a difference. So here's the box that the kit would normally have come in. Again, it's a little bit large for what you actually get, but it is what it is. Oh, weird. Okay. Uh, I don't think I've actually looked at this thing since I bought it. Um, it comes with it comes with photo etch, so that's good. This box is like, what is happening here? Oh, it's like an op a fold open box. Yeah, I don't think I've ever opened this since I actually bought it. Uh, yeah, so the instructions, you can see the original instructions came on much larger paper, which I almost enjoy. Oh, this one's different. Wait a minute, hold on. Okay, so I've got instructions for the B model, not the E model. I'm curious now to see what I actually have in here. Did he mix and match one kit into an older box or did I just get an offset set of There's definitely been some work done on this one. He's already started to scrape the inside down for some. Okay, so I actually have two of the same fuselage. Well, I don't actually. Uh, no, I don't. But yeah, I, I, I mean, comparing. You know, I hate to say it, all the same flaws are in both kits. So it's distinctly possible. Yeah, 100%. So either this is also a later... The plastic is a slightly different shade of gray, though. So this is very possible that this is a later boxing as well, or they had issues from day one with this kit. And I just don't quite know which one it is, but. Yeah, this is an E one. So I have the E kit, uh, but it came with a set of B instructions. Yeah, minor, minor problems. Anyways. Again, I didn't get any decals with this, um, but it is what it is. So, yeah, I don't know if this is, I, at this point, based off of what I see out of this box, it clearly looks like uh, the molds issues go back significantly farther back in the production of the aircraft than I thought, or that boxing is also as late as this. Either way, it is not ideal. It will take a little bit of work to get this built up to look good, but it is what it is. Now, as I said, it did not come with instructions, uh, sorry, uh, decals. So I don't know what uh, decals um, were included, how many different aircraft were included, what quality those decals are. Those are all things I can't answer for you because I just don't have the answers. I'm using Caracal decals, which are going to be significantly better than what uh, would have come in the kit. Um, so that is that. Now I did do a review on those Caracal decals in one of my older what's on my desk videos. I will go back. I'll try to find that uh, uh, that video. I'll put a link down below uh, with a timestamp if you guys do want to see a review on those Caracal decals. Um, otherwise, uh, when I do start building this soon, keep your eye out. I will have the uh, all my uh, monthly update videos, my what's on my desk videos, will start to cover the progress on these kits and a few months later down the line when I complete them, the time-lapse builds will come up. So you will be able to follow along with the build of this and you will get the full time-lapse when I am done. Um, we'll see what, the, I might break it up into multiple videos again, the way I've done the last set. If they go long, 
we'll see how the building goes. So I'm gonna wrap it up here, guys. Uh, thank you for taking your time to watch this ma uh, this video on this product review. If you do have any uh, questions or discussions you want to have, by all means, in the comment section down below, or you can message me or hit me up on Facebook. However you want to do it, uh, go ahead and uh, and uh, take a look at that. Um, so um, yeah, let's wrap it up. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.